Good morning. Stand to your feet, church. Come on. You glad to be in church today? us could probably leave right now and felt like we had church after that song so I love when we pull out those old ones thank you guys this morning for that who loves our worship team this morning amen so I did something a couple weeks back that I want to do again today if you would with me would you stand and I want us to make each other feel welcome for the next just couple seconds if you're online comment hi tell everybody hi but if you would shake hands let each other know that you are happy to see one another That's awesome. I love to feel like the church. Amen. Amen. So today um, we did want to remember that today is Memorial Day. And today we remember those that have given all so that we could be even in this house this morning. 
Um, we would never want to take that lightly. We always want to remember as we go to our cookouts, as we hang out with family, as we get to enjoy this weekend, that somebody had to give it all so that we could enjoy this. So this weekend, you know, in those moments, remember the fallen, remember the ones that, that laid down their life for us. So we just want to remember them in prayer today. But going forward today, um, I am the youth pastor, so I do want to brag on our youth a little bit. So the past couple weeks have been amazing. We've had an awesome start to summer. This past week, we had our summer kickoff, which was super, super fun. We had a great time. We had a bunch of kids there. And uh, we can't forget that our youth leaders make it all happen. So we are thankful for each and every one of them that are always there. Give it up for them if you would. So we are so thankful because Wednesday nights are not possible without them. So we are thankful for that. Um, we wanted to remind you guys that camp meeting is coming up. It is um, the 5th through the 8th. So on that 8th, we will not have service that Wednesday night. But you all are invited to come that week. If you want to come down for the 7 p.m. services, they are every night, the 5th through the 8th. And uh, if you want directions on how to get there, it's in Norman. Pastor would be more than happy to give that to you. We would love to see you there, get to shake your hand before service and get to worship with you those nights. But just wanted to remind you that we will not be here that Wednesday because we as a staff want to go support the Church of God. Um, let me see. I got a list of things I got to remember. I don't want to forget them or Pastor will get me later. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, oh, another youth thing. We have church camp coming up. You as a church, thank you so much. You have raised money for kids to get to go to camp. But if you have a student that would want to go to camp, please come and see me or Pastor Cami as soon as possible because we want them to get to go. It is an amazing time where they get to encounter God but also have a wonderful time with Christian influence all week long. So please, please, please get them to be there because we want them there and we want them to encounter God that week. Um, and then lastly today, we're about to get ready to take up today's offering. So if I could have the uh, ushers work their way on up. Um, we just wanted to remind you all of the uh, Imagine initiative today. Um, there is a lot that we have done as a church. A lot of it you can see. Some of it is hidden. You can't see some of the technology that's went in and other things. But we did want to just highlight a couple of spots that we really have loved. We've loved being able to send Pastor John out. We've loved for this church to be able to go other places and to reach and teach and preach the gospel and love people. Pastor John loves to love people. And we as a church, when we send somebody out, we want them to love the individuals that they come in contact with. And he does that so greatly. Um, also, we wanted to just brag on, I know the women of the church, especially Pastor Twyla and Sky, have done an awesome job with our areas of connection, which I don't know if you've noticed it, but after church, we don't all disappear after five minutes. Some of us are still out there talking and hanging out, and it has been a great time, and we love it, and it looks beautiful, and they did it with excellence. So we just want to, if you see them today after church, maybe just thank them. But we just wanted to give you that reminder because at the end of the month, we're going to start trying to push that a little bit and just make it kind of our focus at the end of the month on every Sunday. So we just want to pray for that and pray that our church continues to grow and that we see new families and people come in. And through what we've done around the church, we hope that that's just influence for them to stay. So I'm going to pray over the offering and the service, and uh, you can give. So, Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for this chance, oh God, to come into your house. We thank you for those that have fallen, God, so that we can be here today. God, I ask that you touch this church. You bless it, Lord. Father, the gifts that are given, let them be used wisely, oh God, Father, throughout this church so that it can be used for your kingdom and that souls would come into your kingdom because of it, God. I ask that you touch the service, touch the worship team as they lead us into your throne room, oh God, Father, and touch our pastor as he gives us a word that you've given him first. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. To continue to worship, church. Just take a minute right now. Before we sing this song, sing your own song to him. Father, we love you.
sing in church.
last time in this place. We're in no hurry. There's no prison wall you can break through.
Father, right now in this place, we lift up holy hands as a sign of our surrender, as a symbol of our receiving what you have for us today. You are the God of revival. You bring dead things back to life. And that we believe. We believe it. You heal sick bodies. You mend broken lives and relationships. You set the solitary in families. And we give you thanks and praise for all that you do. In Christ's name, amen. Amen, amen. Once again, would you give God praise? Would you give God thanks for this praise team? Amen. Hallelujah. You can, you can be seated. I want to be pastoral for a moment, and I want to encourage you. There's, uh, there's three or four things I'm really going really to pump this summer because Memorial Day and Memorial Weekend and all that's kind of the unofficial beginning of summer, just like Labor Day is the unofficial ending of summer. And I want to encourage you to be in God's house as much as you can. I'm going to talk a lot about uh, church attendance. I'm going to talk a lot about being present in church. I'm going to talk a lot about serving in the church. Don't just come, serve. Don't just watch, do. Amen? Don't just be, participate. Amen? Let's get involved in the things that, that God is doing. I'm going to talk about faith this, this summer. I'm going to talk a lot about faith. I'm going to talk a lot about the Holy Spirit this summer. I'm going to talk a lot about giving because it's time that we give unto the Lord that which is His in our tithe. It's time that we give over and above. Listen, we are blessed people. We're extremely blessed. Amen? Hallelujah. I want to tell you, you are blessed. If you ate breakfast this morning, you're blessed. You may say, well, I didn't eat breakfast this morning, but was it a choice or was it because you didn't have anything? We are blessed people, and we have been positioned to bless other people. Amen. When you bless the work of God and the things of God, it allows this church, it allows North Elliott to bless other people and other churches. I'm so excited about the partnerships that we have going. Some of us are going to the Hispanic uh, church today over on Van Street across from Brouhaha. So why do I say across from Brouhaha? Because I'll probably grab one and then go in. Amen. Two o'clock is my napping time. I need a little... Say, Pastor Jr. I got to amen you, so I got to stay awake to to amen you, amen. Part of the time, I know I know you belong to the Hispanic Church. I know you belong there, like family and all that. But but half the time, he's he's over there leading worship on on Sunday afternoon. So we want to we want to support Pastor Jr. We want to support the Hispanic Church, amen. But the uh, Pastor Barry uh, starting the new church. There in Glenpool, it's, it's exploding. It, the, our overseer was there last night. They have Saturday night service. I mistakenly said Sunday a couple of weeks ago, but they have Saturday night service. One of these Saturday nights, we'll go over to Glenpool, and we'll, we'll help support Epic Church. And then we, we have got an awesome partnership forming uh, right now in Murphy. It'll eventually be in Locust Grove Hope Church. And so we're excited about what God is doing there with Pastor Jackson and that congregation as well. God is just moving in our area, and that's what he said a year ago. He said there would be an awakening in northeast Oklahoma, and it is taking place. I don't want you to forget that. I want you to remember that. Amen? God is moving. God is adding to our praise team. We're going to set the base back out by faith. Amen? Amen. By faith, he said, why you, why you got the drums up there? Ain't nobody playing the drums. Well, look back at Jerry and everybody wave at Jerry. That's embarrassing. If you're going to go on Facebook, you got to look for Gerald because he's his proper name. <laughs> we love Jerry. Jerry is such a great addition. He's been around through the years and done some youth camps here. And so we're glad he's grown up. Amen. 
So we're glad that he's here. So God is moving. God is working. I want you to be a part of that. I don't want you to miss out. I say all of these things for your benefit, not for mine. Amen. I learned a long time ago as a 22-year-old pastor with three people in my first church. Amen. And then we had a baby, and so Twyla and me, so we, we, tri- we doubled the church. There were three people when I got there, and then we came, and we doubled the church. So there were six of us, and we won a family of six, and we doubled again. It was awesome. There was 12 of us. I learned a long time ago, and I tell young preachers this all of the time. you got to preach whether the house is large or whether the house is small. And you gotta, you got to be able to preach your way out of anything. Oh, somebody got to listen to me. Whether the singing is good or bad, you got to be able to preach. Whether the congregation's with you or not, you got to be able to preach. I mean, I like it when all the things come together, but you've got to be able to declare what thus saith the Lord. What God gave you, you've got to declare. So I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want you here for my benefit. I want you here for your benefit. Because God has a word for you, and he wants you to receive it, and he wants you to to walk in it. But before I go too far, I have survived um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I've su- survived 10 days of grandchildren. At 55, we have nine grandchildren, and they all live in different states. And starting in April, we have a birthday. Every year, whether myself, Twi- not Twyla, Twyla's in February, myself, grandkids are in, I mean, it's just like, shh, it's like till December. And then we take a month off, and then Twyla and Peyton, and then we take a month off, and then it starts all over again. So, so I'm going broke, um, but I survived. Many of you saw our, our grandson, Case, was here with us and, um, until the summer program started, so we got to bring him to Pryor. He loves the house in Pryor. He loves Pryor. He's such an oak. He said, Pryor. <laughs> I mean, he, just loved, he just loves being here, and he loved going to, to church here. He's my ginger ninja. He's the little redhead. And uh, so we're so thankful for him. But his little brother, Noxie, had a terrible outbreak of, of eczema, an allergic reaction to the medication for eczema, and then an infection on top of that. And so thank you, thank you, thank you for all of you who prayed. We got to spend a couple of days with, with Knox also, and we, we just wrapped it all up at the main event. Yesterday, say, why are you saying all that? Because family's important. Your family's important. So when you do miss, make sure you miss for right reasons, right? Family's important. Your family's important. My family's important. Our families are important to us. So, so spend time with family. You know, I know you're not going to be here 100% of the time. So when you're not here, make good use of it. Amen? Hallelujah. So I want to also say thank you to everyone who prayed for Knox. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Your prayers, good doctors. All of that, faith in Christ, all of that, we give praise. Amen. So we're one week, um, we're one week from Pentecost Sunday. It's the the time of year that the church on the church calendar we celebrate that fifty day mark after Passover. So for us Christians, it's fifty days after Christ arose. So we celebrate that. Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost means 50. So we, Penta, we're talking, we're celebrating. We celebrate that next week. And I got to thinking, you know, I want to, I want to get there early, right? I want, I want to get there ahead of time. So how can we prepare for Pentecost? How can we prepare as we preach about the baptism in the Holy Spirit and, and receiving power to witness? And so I got to thinking about that, and out of that just kind of came this message, and, and some other messages will, will roll out of that, because I believe there is more. Amen? Let me say it like this. There's more. If there wasn't more, Jesus would have told us. There's no more. Right? If there wasn't more... Jesus himself would have said, there's not more. So let's go to the scripture and let's look 
at what Jesus said. Isn't that what that song said? You said it, I believe it. Let's look at what Jesus said. John 20, 21, I mean 20, 21, and 22. So Jesus said to them again, peace to you. Now Jesus is kind of popping in the upper room and popping out the upper room without opening the door. Like he's just appearing, hey, I'm here, feel me. Flesh and bone, pop, gone again. Pop, he's back. He said, I've got peace for you as the Father has sent me into this world with a mission, I also send you. You can, hold, you can leave that up for a minute. I also send you. If you want to know what that mission is, Matthew 28, 18 through 20, Mark 16, 15 through 20, you can go and see what that mission is. Right? This is, this is what he's saying. So now here's the next. This is John's commissioning. Go ahead and give me that verse. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. And he said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Right? But there's more. There's more than just receiving the Holy Spirit at salvation. There's more than just conversion. Remember, we're talking about what did Jesus say. Let's jump over to Luke 24, 46 through 49. Here Jesus is saying, telling them what is written. Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, and you are witnesses of these things. This is Luke's commissioning. Luke is commissioning. He's talking about this. This is the mission that Jesus Christ was to suffer, that Jesus Christ was to die, that Jesus Christ was to raise from the dead. This is your mission. Preach it to all nations. As the Father sent me, so I send you. But there is more. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. I send the promise of my Father up on you. Right? But tarry in the city of Jerusalem, right? Until, until you are clothed. I'm sending the Holy Spirit upon you. So wait for the clothing. Wait for the empowering. Wait for the enablement, right? For you will be endued with power, not from hell. From on high. Oh, there's so many people. I used to hear it when I first became a preacher. They say, tongues is of the devil. And I'd always say to them, well, I never spoke in tongues when I was full of the devil. Right? When I was drunk, I may have blub, 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 blubbered around a little bit, but I never spoke in tongues. Right? The Holy Spirit baptism is not from beneath, it's from above. The same place salvation comes from. In John 3, when we are told that we are born again by the Spirit, for the Spirit blows where He listeth. The Spirit comes from where He wants to come. That's why Jesus said, I breathe on you. Receive the remission of sins. Receive conversion. Receive regeneration. But there is more. There is a promise from my Father. And I want you to stay in Jerusalem. I want you to hang out in the upper room until you have that power. Now let's jump into Acts. This is still Luke talking. Luke wrote Luke. Luke wrote Acts. He's still talking and he says, and Jesus being assembled together with them. Right? People say to me, where is God? I can tell you where God is. Every Sunday morning at 1045, God is right here at 211 North Elliott. 
Because wherever two or three gather together in his name, he's in the midst. So Jesus was in the middle of it. He was right in the middle of what's going on. He's assembled together with them. Jesus isn't disconnected from them. They're not disconnected from Jesus. Everybody's connected like a puzzle. All the pieces are fitting together. And yet he says, Jesus, right, commanded. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait. Two different Greek words. Terry is one Greek word. Wait is another Greek word. I'll tell you what they mean here momentarily. Let me preach my way through this. But wait for the promise of the Father, which Jesus said, which he said, you have heard from me. In the NIV, it says it like this, which you have heard me speak about. So let me read it with the NIV. Jesus commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which you have heard me speak about. There's more. I have told you about the Holy Spirit. When He, the Comforter, when He comes, He will lead you and guide you into all truth. He will remind you of the things that I have said to you. When he comes, there is more, church. If all you got is Jesus at salvation, great. I'll see you in heaven. But if you want more, there is more. There is more power. There is more authority. There is more ability. There is more on this earth, and you can have it. Amen. Hallelujah. But you see, there's only one way to receive more. You have to make room for more. Is that up there? You got to see that. You got to snap with me. There's only one way to receive more. You have to make room for more. You don't just unintentionally get more. Even McDonald's don't supersize the fries, which how long was that? Did we talk about that? Chuck told me in the 90s, right? When everything went big. You got to say, I want more. I watched my little grandson, the, the one that's not a year old yet, Cullen, eating applesauce. Even he knows how to say more, right? He wiggles and jiggles. <laughs> He's like, more. He ain't too happy when that applesauce ran out at the restaurant. There's only one way to receive more. You have to make room for more. But how do I make room for more? Pastor, I'm glad you asked. Number one, you make room for more by faith. You make room for more by faith. Faith. Look at your neighbor and say, every kingdom benefit is received by faith. Every kingdom benefit is received by faith. You want saved? It's by faith you're saved. You want healed? It's by faith you are healed. Jesus' faith your faith, the preacher's faith, somebody's faith. It's by faith. Every kingdom benefit comes by faith. You want the tither's blessing? By faith you tithe. You want a spiritual empowerment? By faith you believe. You ask God for more. Every kingdom benefit is received by faith. So let me break it down for you. You have to believe that there is more to receive more. If you believe that it's all done at salvation, you won't get more. If you believe the gifts of the Spirit died out with the apostles, you won't get healed. If you believe it's all finished and that God just does everything, I remember when, when I was a, a bivocational pastor and I was working at a chop shop, not, not one where they stole cars, but where they cut cars in half. They'd take two of the same car, one wrecked in the front, one wrecked in the back, and they'd cut them in half and weld them together. I don't recommend that. Um, but when you do a buy here, pay here car lot, you know, you can do a lot of things. Um, 
But anyway, I was trained to do it. You know, I mean, there's a way to do it, a right way to do it, and I was trained how to do it and, and all that kind of stuff. But the point is, they would sell these cars, and I remember the guy that owned the business. I remember him. He, he, was, he was one of these people that was a cessationist. He, he believed it was all done. It was all finished. He believed that, you know, kind of God just kind of sits up on his throne, and he, he decided what everything was going to happen, and he spun this little blue marble, and you and I just kind of do. Right? And I said, if you believe that, you're a fool. Because somewhere you had to make a decision. It wasn't God that made you decide to open a car lot. Listen, God doesn't tell you what color of shoes to wear this morning. I struggled with that. I was waiting for some inspiration. Yes, there are things that God has put in our power to decide. There are other things that are supernatural. There are other things that God wants us to choose, but he wants us to choose them because of him. By faith, you have to believe there's more. If you want more power, you have to believe there's more power. If you want a prayer language, you have to believe there's a prayer language. If you want a healing, you have to believe there's a healing. Everything, every kingdom benefit comes by faith. So here's what I'm saying. Basically, I'm saying this. You have to believe that Jesus sent the Holy Spirit not only to save you, but to baptize you. If you're going to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, you have to believe that Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to baptize you, not only to save you. You see, it was Jesus, not a preacher, not a denomination, that said there is an experience after conversion. After you're saved, there is more. He said, receive the Holy Spirit, you're saved. And then he started talking about the promise of the Father. So what you and I have to do is say, Jesus, I believe your word. I believe you're a man of your word. I believe what you said. I believe that your Holy Spirit is for me. Just as Acts 2.39 says, it is for me and my children and as many that are afar off as many as the Lord our God shall call I believe the Holy Spirit is for me and I believe the Holy Spirit is for others that's why I preach it second point you make room for more by preparing. And this preparation for more is made by prayer and discipline. By prayer and discipline. Let me work my way through a couple of these. In prayer, you empty yourself of self. You see, you can't have more if you don't have room for more. So it is in prayer that you empty yourself of self. It is in prayer that you take inventory. What stays, what goes. Right? Just like Paul. They're out there on the sea. Acts 16. They're chunking stuff off the boat. Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. You need to get in your prayer closet and say, I don't need that. But I need this. I don't need that anymore, but I need this. That way you make room for God. But it isn't just about emptying self of self. It isn't just about taking inventory. It's also about removing obstacles and eliminating distractions. What is in your way to receiving more? What is distracting you from receiving more? What are you consumed with? What hobbies, Rick Warren would say, what habits, what hang-ups? Pastor Ken would say it like this, what addictions, what attractions, what appetites, 
What things are in your life that are keeping you, right, from receiving more? What things are inside you that other people don't know about? Listen, I want to help somebody right now. Our problem as believers isn't temptation. Our problem is we succumb to temptation. And the reason we succumb to temptation is we're full of self. We've not taken inventory. We've got all kinds of distractions, and we allow all kinds of obstacles to get in our way. The reason I say our problem isn't temptation, because Jesus said in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, that with every temptation, he himself has provided a way of escape that you and I might be able to bear under it, to, to get under that temptation. So here's temptation. It's pressing. It's pressing. Oh, look at that. Oh, check that out. Oh, buy that. Oh, do this. Oh, do that. But if you'll get under that thing and come out on the other side and say, I'm not, I'm not succumbing to that temptation. Because James tells us in James 1.13 that when we are tempted, we are not tempted by God. Because verse 14 tells us why we're tempted. You and I are tempted when we are enticed. And drawn away, right, by our own desires. I like it too much to have more. I like what I'm doing more than I want the Holy Spirit. More than I want His baptism. More than I want His presence. More than I want His power. More than I want His glory. More than I want His peace. More than I want His love. I like doing this. I like it. But even Moses, prophetically in Hebrews, it says in, in Hebrews 11, he had to make a decision that he did not want to be known as the Pharaoh's daughter, but rather chose suffering with the people of God than to be known as Pharaoh's daughter. He could have had all of it. Possibly even the Pharaoh ship, if there's such a thing. The Pharaoh ship. But he chose not. He chose the sufferings, it says in Hebrews, of Christ. He counted them as greater riches. Greater riches. Here's what I want you to know about preparation. There is a greater riches. There are kingdom riches. Riches that are beyond carnal pleasures and appetites and addictions and desires that if we could just see. And listen, I'm not preaching with a finger that way. I'm talking to Ken. Because I like stuff just like everybody else likes stuff. I've got so much stuff. I've got half a garage full of stuff. And I've got a storage building full of stuff. You know what some of my stuff is? I have sermons in boxes. And the other day I'm like, my kids do not care about my sermons. If I die, who wants to go through 20 boxes of this? Right? 2003, I started typing everything. Before that, it's handwritten. Who wants to go through that? I'm not saying that's pride, but it could be. You know, I might use that someday, right? I might re-preach that somewhere. Because if it wasn't worth preaching the first time, it, you know what I'm saying? If you can't preach it again, it wasn't worth preaching the first time. That's kind of the way it is. So I want you to see this. I want you to grasp this. I want you to get a hold of this. The reason we lack more is because we lack prayer and discipline. Let me go to my third point. You make room for more by placement. You see, you get in position to receive more.
by obedience. See, this morning as we prepare for Pentecost Sunday next week, when I actually preach about what happened on that day 2,000 years ago by getting in the line of fire. And I mean fire metaphorically. I, 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 mean, I mean fire in the sense of the phrase or the saying. When somebody is, 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 is shooting a gun or, or an arrow, you know, you don't want to get in the line of fire, right? You don't want to be the direction that that weapon is pointing. But I'm telling you, there's a baptism in the Holy Spirit, and you and I need to get positioned in the direct line of fire. The Holy Spirit and fire, right? For John truly baptized you in water, but I have a baptism of fire that you shall receive. Fire. We need to get in the line of fire. You see, obedience positions you to receive more by placing you in the direct line of fire. What was the line of fire in the Bible? Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the upper room. That was the direct line of fire. He said to 500 people before he ascended, I want you to go to Jerusalem. I want you to tarry. I want you to wait in the city of Jerusalem. I want you to wait there until you have put on power. Power to be my witness. Jerusalem was in the direct line of fire. I don't want you to go by yourself. I want everybody to go. But only 120 of the 500 went. So I want to ask you, where is your Jerusalem? Where is my Jerusalem? Where is your upper room? Where is my upper room? Where are your people? Where is my people? I watched Sonic the Hedgehog 2 15 times, I told everybody. With my grandson. He's like, I said, can we watch one? Nope. I said, I, but I got to watch one. I got to see what happened. So he let me watch it once so I could see what happened in one so I could understand too. And you just have to watch the movie to understand what I'm saying. But there's this phrase today, and it's called your squad. Who's your squad? Who's your people? Who's your tribe? You see, Sonic was all alone. He needed a he needed a squad. He needed friends. He needed family. He needed the church. He needs people. And so do you and I. We need other people who have experienced and are experiencing the same things we are. So we can run together and do life together and fulfill the commission together. But you got to get in place. You got to get in direct line of fire. The second way is once you identify your Jerusalem is you have to wait and you have to tarry. Remember, I told you I was going to define these words. The word tarry means to sit down and to settle. To sit down and to settle. I'm so short, I'm afraid if I sit down on the stage, I'll go off camera. Amen. Amen. I think Tom Thumb was my cousin. Some of you get that. The rest of you don't. You don't they don't talk about Tom Thumb in school anymore. I'm, I'm giving you time to get it. Those of you who are getting it, I hear you giggling. And then wait means to wait for with expectation, with hope. You see, they had no doubt believing Jesus because he had followed through with every other thing he had told them. You see, you and I have to understand this. The waiting and the tarrying you and I do 
isn't for the Holy Spirit to come because he has already came. The waiting and the tearing you and I do is us. We're not waiting on Jesus to do something. He's done it. Jesus is waiting on us to receive it. And so sometimes you've got to wait before the Lord with hope and expectation. I didn't receive the baptism today, but I am going to receive it. Sometimes you've got to sit down and settle yourself. Because it isn't about power. It isn't about getting knocked in the head and falling out and having some kind of crazy dream. If you are going to receive power and you're going to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he's not going to possess you. That's what demons do. And then they do their life through your physical being. The Holy Spirit doesn't do that. He's the comforter. He comes alongside. If you're going to pray in a prayer language, you're going to pray in a prayer language by faith in cooperation with the Holy Spirit as he fills you because you've gotten in the direct line of fire. And you've waited, and you've tarried, and you've believed for it. Before I close, I just feel like I want to pray for everyone right now. Father, I believe that the Holy Spirit baptism is for everyone. I believe this gift is for me, and it's for others. I believe this gift is for me, and it's for my betterment. I believe this gift is for others, and it's for their betterment. So would you right now just begin to fill your people, either for the first time or again, the hundredth time, with a fresh outpouring and a prayer language? Would you do it now, Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you just stand to your feet and just begin to praise him? Just begin to praise him. Hallelujah. As Pastor Reuben plays, just begin to sing your own song. Father, I believe. I believe that the Holy Spirit is for me. I believe. I believe. I believe that the Holy Spirit baptism is for me. I believe there's more, more of your spirit, more of your power, more of your glory, more of your grace, more of your goodness. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe what you In your own way right now, just take a couple of minutes. If you've got something to sing, go ahead and sing it. Let's just take a few minutes. I'll I'll wrap this up here at the end. But let's just worship him. Everybody in your own way. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. I just want to encourage you today to seek more, to pursue more. You see, our ability to receive more, and in this case, the baptism in the Holy Spirit is in direct proportion to our faith, our preparation, and our positioning. If you and I want more, it will be in direct proportion to what we do to make room for more. So this week, I want to encourage you. As you find your Jerusalem, as you tarry in his presence, offloading what needs to go, emptying self of self, making room for more. This is the prayer I'm asking you to pray. Jesus, I believe there is more. Jesus, I believe there is more for me and I receive more now. And just receive it. Receive the Holy Spirit. Don't worry about tongues. Don't, don't worry about power. Don't worry about just, I receive. And then just begin to love on him and worship him and let him fill you with the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 God, I thank you for this service. I thank you for the move of your spirit and the stirring in this place for more. Father, now go with your people and bless us today abundantly in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God bless you.